Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Leeds series. The city of Leeds is one of the five metropolitan boroughs of West Yorkshire. 38 civil parishes lie within its boundaries. Which slice of the city are we seeing today? Now today in Leeds, I've come to one of the largest settlements in the northeastern corner of the city. This one will take me about two hours to walk around. And you may have noticed from the last episode, I've ditched the jacket and I've ditched the jogging bottoms. I'm down to my shorts and my t-shirt. And <laughs> it'll just be my luck that this overcast weather, which is still here, will suddenly turn into rain. Just be my luck seeing as I'm wearing this. Hopefully not, this is Boston Spa. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Boston Spa is one of the largest villages in Yorkshire. Surprisingly, as a civil parish, it doesn't have town status, which is really strange given how much it has. We're beginning this walk around, which was well over six kilometres long, at the parish's southern boundary with Clifford. St John's Catholic School for the Deaf can be seen over this field. What follows will be a series of housing estates to the west of the village before we hit the A659 Tagcaster to Otley Road, which in itself is partly responsible for Boston Spa's size. Boston Spa is situated three miles south of Weatherby, on the south bank of the River Wharf, which separates it from Thorpe Arch. A little further around the route, we'll see the wharf up close. With a population of well over 4,000 people, you might think that this ranks as one of Leeds's largest parishes. In fact, it only comes in at the 12th largest within the city. The origin of Boston Spa's name is not entirely clear. The earliest the name appears on maps is in 1771, when it was labelled Thorpe Spore. The name Thorpe Spore presumably meant the spa associated with Thorpe Arch, which was the nearest pre-existing settlement. The Boston element of the name is interesting. That's first noted in 1799 as Boston Gate, and then in 1822 simply as Boston. It's thought that Boston was the surname of a local family, whose name itself derives from Boston, Lincolnshire. When you put the two elements together, it all then makes sense. With Boston growing up and around the spore, which would eventually drop its W, the name Boston Spa emerges. After a little trek through the housing estate, which by the way are much larger than what I've shown, we're on the high street, or if you will, the A659. This is a former turnpike road and it's where most of Boston Spa's amenities and other interesting things are. It, like the majority of the village's streets, is well looked after as well. So the A659 Turnpike, it was built to connect Tadcaster to Otley in 1753. There are a few things to see as we head along it, including the Deepdale Community Centre. A vitally important route, Joseph Tate built a house to accommodate visitors along the Turnpike that would eventually become the Royal Hotel, which is still standing and we'll catch it later. By 1819, Boston Spa had a population of more than 600 people and several inns and other houses offering accommodation. 
spa baths were also built to allow visitors to take to the waters. And visitors are something that Boston Spa still has no shortage of. These days, you can even get here by bus. The numbers you need to reach the village are 492, 174, 61 and number 7. Boston Spa contains an area of dwellings constructed during World War II as well to house workers from Thorparch Munitions Factory. Whilst that period of history is behind it, the properties still stand in much the same way as these gorgeous Georgian townhouses do along the High Street. There's always something to be said about finding an old sign which tells you what something used to be. Now across the road here, there's one above the door of this house here. It says J. Wilson, joiner, cabinet maker, upholsterer and undertaker, coal and carting agent and firewood merchant. I'll bet it doesn't do all that these days. Much like neighbouring Clifford, Boston Spa is part of a conservation area which used to be larger than the current boundary which now just focuses on the historic core. A few more steps and we'll be at the Church of St Mary the Virgin, an active Anglican parish church in the Archdeaconry of York and the Diocese of York. It's a Grade 2 listed building. Before we get there we've got a vet to look at on the other side of the road. This is Westwood Vet which has well established practices situated in both Boston Spa and in Garforth. And there's also a car park which might not seem like that big of a landmark, but parking on Boston Spa High Street can be a little difficult. There's a second one further around the route too. The current church was constructed over 12 years from 1872 to 1884, designed by the architect W.H. Parkinson. It has a four bay nave and a tower to the west and the vestry is on the southern side. It's built of ashlar magnesian limestone, although some of the ornamental dressings are of sandstone. It was also open with the invitation outside to come in and rest a while. Of all the places to find one of these things, I didn't expect it to be in here. Table football, I've not played this in ages. Let's see if I can score a goal. Ah, wrong way. Am I blue team or red team? Ah. I'm doing this with one hand, which is not easy. Come on. Terrible back pass. Ah! Come on. Hey, there we go. Oh, another ball's gone walkies down there. I better go and retrieve that. There are three public houses in Boston Spa, all of which are located on the high street. This here is the newly refurbished Crown Hotel, owned by an independent group of investors. The Crown Hotel closed in 2012 and reopened in May 2021 following a nine year closure and an extensive renovation, transforming it into a contemporary country pub. Opposite it is a petrol station named Central Garage, and to be honest, you don't often see these in the village. Most of the ones I filmed have been in small towns. There's an eclectic range of shops here, from the chain stores to the smaller independent retailers. Our route will catch most of them later, because our next job is to head for the River Wharf. Holgate Lane is what we need to do that. This is a public bridleway, but it's otherwise a private road, so if you follow my route around, you'll need to adhere to the signs. This is an ideal time to mention walking routes. The route of the White Rose Way, a long distance walk from Leeds to Scarborough, passes through the village. So this is where those hills I was talking about come into play. I've just walked down this hill along this bridleway, and of course later I'll need to go back up that it's not very steep to be honest but uh, yeah um, <laughs> considering this is a two hour walk you really don't want that halfway around but uh, that's how it is I suppose. This leads towards the river wharf that's down there let's go and have a look at it. As well as the White Rose Way the Ebor Way passes over the river at Thorpe Arch and into Boston Spa before continuing towards Tadcaster. Now you remember the weir from Thorpe Arch Bridge I hope well here we're right up close and personal with it. This guy was too, and he was happy to pose for a bit of fame on YouTube. I should just mention he returned the compliment, and somewhere on the internet there's a photo of me which he took straight afterwards. Let's continue to Thorpe Arch Bridge. Now of course we stood on this in the Thorpe Arch episode. It looks a little different from underneath it must be said. It's in magnesium limestone and consists of five segmental arches. On the eastern side of the bridge is a plaque, which is a neat little reminder of when it was built and the history around it. 
It's a grade two listed structure. This was a lovely little picturesque spot for a stop for a few minutes and to admire the view. I only wish myself and Nikki had chosen this side of the wharf for the parish notice board a few weeks ago. Well, it's certainly a different view of the bridge from down here, isn't it? You might remember there was a parish notice board a few weeks ago that started on Thorpe Arch Bridge. And then, of course, the Thorpe Arch episode featured the bridge as well. But of course, in both cases, I was stood on the bridge. And here, of course, I'm stood next to it on this uh, bridleway slash footpath, which I'm going to keep following, by the way, because it will take me towards my next major part of Boston Spa. Our route now comes to the site of the Spa Baths, the very landmark which gives Boston Spa part of its name. The bathhouse contained two baths, one hot and one cold, and there was also a tea room. Spa Lane is still named as such as this is the road that led to them. The buildings were eventually sold at auction in 1911 as Boston Spa's popularity as a spa town declined. Spa towns were certainly popular though. The waters were deemed by the experts of the day to have therapeutic qualities. Coupled with the turnpike, you can see why it grew so fast. The baths were built beside the wharf in 1834 and the building was part of the Gascoigne family's Parlington estate. They certainly got about a bit in Leeds, didn't they? We're now in the east of the village, an area which has a blue plaque on virtually every building going. Here's Wesley Terrace, for example, built in 1815 for Reverend John Pierce. In the far distance here, you can just about make out a building with a large opening in the centre of it. That's a stable block and carriage house, and handily, another plaque close by can tell us about it. And then here we've got the terrace, and there's a blue plaque, built as a hotel in 1790 by Kalita Kitchen, paper maker of Thorpe Arch. The hotel was not successful and the buildings were used as a boys' school from 1798 known as the Seminary, with Dr. Pierce acting as headmaster. By 1824, the buildings were converted into private houses. Directly below is the former bathhouse, erected by Spa Bath Company in 1834. And opposite is the former stable block and carriage house, which is what I've just been talking about. So there, there they are, that was a former hotel, the terrace, and that was its stable block and carriage house. Greystones is next, another building with a blue plaque. This one has some charity history to it thanks to Leonard Cheshire, a World War II pilot of Leonard Cheshire disability fame. A few more paces and we're at the Fox and Hounds. This together with the Admiral Hawk, the third pub in Boston Spa, is owned and managed by Samuel Smith's Brewery. Proving that Boston Spa firmly has its feet in the 21st century, right opposite the pub is a gym. Because you know, after a good workout session, you might want a pint or two, right? And with that, we're off down Grove Road. We're heading for the Martin House Hospice, which is at the end of this street. And it's for children and young people with life-limiting illnesses. On the way, we pass some more newer build housing. I won't say new build, because these seem to have been here a while. There's a small park too. One of the newer streets is this one on the right. It may not look anything in particular, but you know me by now, I don't turn the camera on for nothing. So I was just thinking to myself as I was walking down here that there's not much at this end of Boston Spa. And then I noticed the name of this street. Turnpike Close, obviously a reference to the A659, which was a former turnpike. It amazes me how many times we see streets with names that have links to the local history. More often than not, there's something in them, you know. If you've never heard of Martin House, it's a charity that provides that all-important care across West, North and East Yorkshire, either at the hospice itself or in families' own homes. The hospice was founded by the Reverend Richard Seed and was officially opened by the Duchess of Kent in 1987. It costs Martin House in excess of £9 million every year to provide its services across the region. Speaking of young'uns, there are three primary schools in the village. Primrose Lane Primary School, St Edward's Catholic Primary School and this one, St Mary's C of E on Clifford Road. Off Clifford Road we have Hall Mews, which is effectively a collection of small businesses. However, the name Hall Mews is not without a bit of history. We're in the vicinity of Boston Hall. The main hall is situated off the High Street, but all this area is historically linked with it. 
In 1939, Boston Hall's occupants were Charles H. Rowe, he of coach building fame, and his wife Kathleen. Its current tenant is none other than Jeffrey Boycott. In 2019, though, the property was listed for sale by Boycott because he and his wife Rachel planned to move to Cheshire. Okay, so Clifford Road has brought us into the centre of Boston Spa, and we're going to start off this section with both the Village Hall and what looks there like a war memorial. Let's go and have a look at both of those. Here's the war memorial. Earlier this year, an application was made to repair five damaged stones on this, which had begun to crumble. Pointing is also missing in several places. The Methodist Church is also along here as well. It dates from 1846. The first preacher was George MacDonald, grandfather of Stanley Baldwin and Rudyard Kipling. So to the Village Hall. This is an ideal time to talk about local village events. Boston Spa's annual gala is held in June, and since 2009 a beer festival has taken place here in the Village Hall. The Hall has hosted a nationally renowned weekly jazz night since January 2005, and an annual arts festival, usually in October. Here's the parish notice board everyone. Next to the Village Hall is this green space. I wasn't totally sure if this was just a garden or whether it was a small park. Perhaps that's something locals can help me with. For the most part now, the high street becomes shops for a good half a mile stretch, which certainly adds further question marks over Boston Spa not having town status. The blue plaques keep on coming. Here we have St Kitts, built by Reverend Christopher Atkinson for his daughters in 1774, and it remained in the family until 1860. It's the first of the village grand houses to be built following the creation of a turnpike road linking Otley with Tadcaster. And this is what it looks like. I know it's a long distance away, but the driveway's private, so I can't go any further than this. This is what you'd call the centre of the village now. Amongst its commercial offerings, there's a post office, a travel shop, a furniture dealer, and plenty of other small independent retailers. We'll come back to the high street in a few moments, after we've veered away from it down Stables Lane to catch something else equally important to village life. This is a piece of artwork that's not only fabulous, but also helpful. This artwork shows Stables Lane Community Park, the main village playing fields and recreational area. Let's go and have a look at it. On the way, we pass another car park similar to the one on the high street. Boston Spa may be busy, but there's always a place for your vehicle if you know where to go. Stables Lane has a history of its own. Until 1957, Boston Spa had no playing fields. Quite amazing when you consider its size. It was first brought to attention in 1944. This was originally farmland, half of which was purchased by the parish council between 1951 and 1956. It's some nine and a half acres of land and it was opened by Bernard Poole of Leeds Rugby League FC. It's quite a lovely little park this. It's right in the centre of Boston Spa and you wouldn't know it was here unless you either were a local or you saw the sign on the side of that shop that I took a shot of earlier. And it's really quite delightful. There's plenty of space to park your car. There's loads of activities for the kids. There's a nice play park over there. There's tennis courts behind me, which you've just seen. Plenty of open space. It really is a nice part of Boston Spa, this. That brief visit to Stables Lane broke up the high street into two chunks. Despite Weatherby being literally just three miles away, it's quite heartwarming to see a village thriving like Boston Spa is. There's more than just shops too. There are restaurants, popular ones at that. Take Tom Foolery, for example, on the corner of Bridge Road, open from 9 a.m. daily. One of the main shops in Boston Spa is this cost cutter. This is the former Royal Hotel, or if you will, originally Farrer's Hotel, built by Joseph Tate in 1753, as we mentioned earlier. It's built of painted magnesium limestone with roofs of stone slate, Welsh slate and cement tiles and it's historic for many reasons. The original building was the first substantial house in Boston Spa. Next, and not to be confused with the British Library over the River Wharf, we come to Boston Spa's library located at the Millennium Gardens next to the Central Car Park. These stones in front of the library were quite eye-catching. They're the main reason I crossed the road here in truth. Does anybody know anything about them?
you just never know who you're going to meet where. <laughs> I've just had a conversation with somebody who follows me. His name was Roy. I'm sure he'll be watching this episode. He actually lives in the East Riding. He lives in Newport. And I asked him, why are you over here? This is miles away from Newport. This is not in the East Riding, nowhere near. Apparently he has relations out here and he's over here to see them. Uh, at a restaurant over there, one of the ones over here. Can't remember which one he said now. But there you go, you just never know who you're gonna meet and where. And that's the beauty of this channel. Okay, we're almost finished with Boston Spa. All I have to do now is walk a little bit further down this road and then take a left turn to where my car is parked. And that will be it. So let's see what else we can find to finish this episode off. Now we're almost around the route. Here's a brilliant piece of evidence that Boston Spa was located on a turnpike. It's a milestone. Note the top of the stone where it says Clifford come Boston. From 1866 to 1896, Boston Spa was part of the civil parish of Clifford with Boston, and it became a separate civil parish thereafter. In the Clifford episode, I referred to it as Clifton with Boston. That's because with all the best will in the world, the internet is never 100% reliable, and it's a mistake in Clifford's Wikipedia entry. The milestone confirms the true former name. Our last street is Church Street, which is also where I began some two hours ago. Down here is a former church building, which has now been repurposed. This is the former Primitive Methodist Chapel, which opened its doors in 1872, despite the plot of land being bought for it in 1847. It's now Boston Spa Scout and Guide HQ. And that, my friends, is that. Although there was one more thing that I've saved until the very end, and it's right here on Church Street. We'll get to that in a moment, so stick around. Okay, I'm just a few paces away from the car now, and that's Boston Spa in the books, and it's taken me, as I thought, about two hours to walk around. And I think you guys need a picture bit now. There's plenty to put in this one, because uh, there's loads of places I haven't been here. It's so big, Boston Spa. Certainly can't cover it all on foot. So let's see what I found for you in today's picture bit. Okay, uh, that's pretty much it for Boston Spa, although there is one more thing I would like to talk about. When I was planning this route, my original idea was to somehow cut between this street here that I'm on and the next one over Clifford Road. And on the map, it looks like there's a footpath which runs down the side of this building right here, but there isn't. And if there is, it's blocked off. But in doing so, this building was interesting enough to talk about. It looks like an abandoned, run-down old house. Doesn't appear to be doing much at the moment. I didn't know what it was, I couldn't tell what it was just from the map. Did a bit of research, still couldn't find out what it was. But now, I kind of have an idea what it might have been. If we just walk across the road... ...without kicking my tripod, and peer through the gates, you might be able to see a door that's boarded up and just above that door it says in the little white box student entrance was this a school boston spa locals i'm going to leave you with that was this some kind of school please do let me know in the comments down below but apart from that that's been the parish of Boston Spa, and it's time for me to move on to my next one here in the city of Leeds. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.